markets are looking healthy this morning as retail traders are bracing for a breakout in the indices, major trades, or excuse me, breakout trades across the major indices. However, is a two-month uh, index consolidation waiting for us? Is the S&P 500 going to pull a Bitcoin here and go completely sideways? If so, I would recommend straddling those options, ladies and gentlemen, because we've got a lot of traders to fake out. Meanwhile, altcoins continue their ascent into new highs as newcomers come to take over from the top DeFi performers. All this and more in today's exciting episode of Breaking Bitcoin. Hi, this is Brian Kerr from Kava Labs. You're watching Breaking Bitcoin. Even more DeFi. Happy for Breaking Bitcoin and welcome back to Breaking Bitcoin. This is, of course, your daily source for everything cryptocurrency markets, trading and investing. I'm your host, Justin Wise, a lead analyst at CrackingCryptocurrency.com. Hopefully, everyone watching today is doing fantastic wherever they are and however they happen to be tuning in to us today, whether you're watching us on YouTube, Twitch, DLive, Facebook Live, or on Roku with the Investor News Channel app. Before we get going, we are, of course, proud to host the fastest growing online community of traders and investors. To stay up to date, make sure to join our Discord server at discord.crackingcryptocurrency.com. Links in the description down below. All right, a few things before we get started. Premium member updates. Online Trading Academy is going to be going live today with our first course rollout. That is, of course, Pathways to Profit. That is our proprietary strategy building course. Uh, individuals in that course, of course, learn how to build their own daily swing trading systems that follows with traditional trend following methods with our own uh, proprietary risk management systems, with our own proprietary searching, our own spreadsheets and our own strategy creation process. Um, it's going to be I'm, I'm really, really excited for this to go live. I've been working on this pretty furiously over the last few months, as well as the entire team. Uh, we're going to be flipping the switches on uh, this afternoon. So current premium members who have a premium plus or uh, higher subscription, as well as, uh, of course, the Premium Plus and um, uh, an equivalent legacy packages, will have access to the Online Trading Academy and the first course rollout, which, as I said, is Pathways to Profit. Uh, it's broken down into 10 modules. Uh, each module is comprised of anywhere from 5 to 10 lessons. Uh, each lesson generally has its own quiz as well. And upon completion of each module, an individual receives a certificate to uh, certify that that individual has completed that course and is uh, trained and prepared and done uh, with that particular aspect and should have that component in their strategy. Uh, and as we, as an individual, as a student progresses through all the modules, they put all of their learning together until finally what they emerge from, uh, what they emerge with from the course is their fully back-tested, forward-tested, uh, efficient, pro uh, profitable uh, swing trading strategy designed to work on the daily time frame or higher. Uh, and of course, there are other components in there as well. We do learn some discretionary methods along the way, but you know, the back testing experience, the strategy building experience, the, the entire strategy process, the entire strategy creation process that one is going to get from that course uh, really is not like anything else that I currently see available. Um, almost everything that's currently available is discretionary. Almost everything that's currently available puts no emphasis on back testing, puts no emphasis on actual experimentation in the markets, no, puts no um, puts no emphasis on tracking results, tracking statistics, performing st statistical analysis of one's results either historical or alive. And of course, this all culminates in the big forward testing process. Uh, the last module that I do need to add, which is not currently there, I just need to go ahead and publish it, uh, which I will be doing either today or tomorrow, but the course will be going live today, uh, is going to be kind of the kind of the moving forward. Like, where does one go after one has this objective strategy? Does one stop here? Well, the short answer is no. Um, with the, you know, kind of with the strategy creation mindset, with the strategy creation process that one has picked up along the way and going through the Pathways to Profit course, uh, you know, I really encourage individuals to build upon that, right, to go ahead and use that information, to use that knowledge to build their own discretionary systems or to begin building their own discretionary rules based systems uh, to be, you know, learning how to take profits and invest them in the long term positions, how to take trophy trades. And then also kind of the goal for many of our traders coming to us, which is, you know, how do I become uh, how do I really get the working capital and how much capital do I need? to do this full time? How do I trade cryptocurrency for a living and earn a full and earn a full time living either to support myself or my family of uh, the process that I myself have gone through and many of our analysts have gone through and, and, and quite a few of our uh, students as well. So we'll go through the different paths that you can go through, i.e. how much objective capital I think that you need to actually trade and what risk you should utilize to maintain that average uh, monthly income. And then as well, other options as well, such as how to get funded, whether that's through a proprietary desk, 
uh, and where you can approach, um, you know, where you can find those opportunities in the current cryptocurrency market as opposed to, you know, other markets that are more uh, fluid, such as Forex and equity. And then as well, uh, kind of tips and tricks and strategies on how to build your own fund, which I honestly prefer and I recommend individuals do, either in the form of a friends and family or by approaching private investors themselves and how to do that, uh, tips and tricks on how to do that, because that is the process that I've gone through myself. Uh, so anyways, that'll be going live later this afternoon. Really excited for that. And I hope you guys enjoy that. So uh, the other courses that we will be adding uh, over the next few months is going to be um, strategy building in Pine. Um, our modified pathways to profit approach to strategy creation, which really does focus on uh, building strategies in Pine, uh, utilizing trading views, proprietary scripting language, Pine, and um, uh, as well as our technical analysis 101s, as well as our discretionary trading 101s, uh, you know, investing mentality, investment psychology, uh, trade psychology, risk management, and emotional discipline. So those will all be courses uh, with their result, uh, excuse me, with their subsequent certificates and all the education that's going to come along with that. So a uh, huge step forward, huge move forward. So uh, moving on from that, uh, the members come home campaign, uh, we are going to be issuing emails throughout the course of today that should be going out later today uh, so previous premium members who were subscribed to the premium trading group who have not had access or had the opportunity or pleasure to experience our new signals to experience our new educational material particularly with the form of the online trading academy uh, and just with all of our new analysis with all of our new mentoring with all of our new indicators we want to give them an opportunity to come home and enjoy and appreciate that so those emails will be going with some pretty hefty discounts and a great opportunity for those members to rejoin the community all right um Moving on from that. Uh, so major thoughts today, we're going to be looking at kind of the big story today, which is, well, a couple of them. One is the kind of wire card COO on the run and laundering his money apparently through cryptocurrency. So we're going to look at that. And just a reminder that it doesn't really matter how official somebody is or how high up the totem pole they are. Uh, there is still, I mean, some of the shadiest things occur uh, in the places where you would least expect it. And then also major crypto exchanges, you know, helping to prevent last week's infamous Twitter scam from being much worse, they claim. Uh, by blacklisting the deposit addresses that were advertised on Twitter for this scam, Coinbase and other major exchanges did help prevent nearly $300,000 in BTC being sent. And, you know, kind of the, the question that I want to explore is, is this a good example of centralized exchanges actually helping the less tech savvy investors and being the right choice for them, as opposed to kind of the younger generation that is willing to take responsibility for their own keys, their own coin? All right, if you guys have any questions, make sure to drop them in the live chat. The moderators are there to help you, not there to hurt you. Um, be happy to take some chart requests as we move forward into the show a little bit today. Uh, and of course, if you guys are watching on YouTube, make sure to hit the thumbs up button and subscribe. And if you subscribe, you do have to hit the notification bell. It's the only way it's going to work. I'm going to need a commitment from you guys. All right, so with that being said, let's hop over into the live scene and check out what's going on with BTC. And as I kind of said last week, you know, expert analysts predict more sideways. And guess what we've gotten? More sideways. Meanwhile, you know, long altcoins with prejudice has been the uh, modus operandi. So let's check out what's going on in the live scene, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. And here we are. All right, let's see here. We've got Mr. Hutt QC in the house, Jose Canetta borg's channel we got mr ether who has got a half day today heading home from completing good job my friend jordan stotts uh, caprica uh do i drive a challenger i do not i uh i drive a silverado wouldn't mind hearing me debate tommy laren on anything i will debate anybody just about on anything Got uh, Saintsy over there on DLive. Good to see you, my friend. And unfortunately, today's show is not showing up in the feed. We've got Richard in the house as well. Good to see you guys. All right. Um, all right. So comment shout out. So in uh, in Friday's uh, episode right here, I wanted to give a shout out to uh, I, I certainly am not above uh, flattery. Uh, we've got Evil Face DJ who left this comment. I did go ahead and pin it. He said, "Did I notice a huge uptick in production quality?" Hopefully, you did, and that's uh, that. Ha that's what happens when me and the producer sit down and just go over kind of the layout of the show for about three hours and try to make it as clean and uh, good looking as possible. All right. Other than that, let's go over the trade of the day. Uh, you know, I kind of want to just summarize trades that were posted for the premium trading group, and to that purpose, I will go ahead and. Show this as best as I can here. 
and there we go all right so here we go right here uh here are, are my current close results for the month uh trades that i have taken and published for the premium trading group all right pull that up here a little bit so overall pretty good month so far um I have had a good hit rate this month. Uh, not a lot of chop, not a lot of consolidation. Again, being a little bit more careful with my entries. Uh, and overall, just honestly though, just, just another month, another month in the trading group. Um, but the, kind of the trades that I wanted to point out today that I did finally get an opportunity to close this morning was uh, VeChain Perp and Ada Perp uh, on the shorts, on the perpetual shorts. Um, so anyways, both pulling in about 9% uh, R, uh, you know, ROI, excuse me, from entry to exit. Uh, discretionary trades that were taken, uh, just fading breakouts, just fading secondary legs up, uh, and they've pulled back down to kind of the optimum areas where I wanted to get them back in. Um, not a whole lot though to talk about there. Those trades were taken on FTX. Uh, I have been utilizing that platform because I can get the liquidity that I need uh, to take the altcoin shorts. Binance Margin is generally uh, the platform that I do prefer to take those trades. But as I talked about on Friday, um, had a little bit of an issue with getting the liquidity that I needed for the link short which actually uh, was a losing trade here. As you can see here in row 51, that was a losing short that I took, but overall the wins from the uh, Cardano and VeChain shorts um, uh, helped push that to the upside. So, so that was a, uh, a losing wash, all good. That's about trade of the days right there. Um, other notable trades that are currently on. Overall, things are good. We'll go over kind of my highlight trades here in just a little bit uh, when we get to USO and the SPX 500, which are probably uh, probably the trades that I'm most excited about outside of altcoins, which um, eh, where we're at with altcoins for the most part, just holding the positions that I have open and looking for new weekly entries. But, you know, I think Jason makes a very good point there that, uh, you know, if you look at weekly charts, we do have quite a bit of room to run on the majority of our indices here. All right, so the first thing that we're going to look at here is the same Ichimoku chart that we've looked at on Friday that we looked at on Thursday. And I do see that the similarity on my green screen here is a little too high. Um, just have to kind of make the best of it because I don't really want to stop and spend a ton of time uh, messing with it. I'm going to spend like five seconds messing with it. There we go. There we go. I don't like my, I don't like my face disappearing in front of me. All right, so nothing, uh, nothing huge to report here, guys. Uh, as everybody is, uh, as everybody is well aware, right? Bitcoin hasn't made the interesting movements that we want to see. Um, there are, you know, good arguments, good cases. Obviously, my macro opinion, my macro opinion is that we do move up. Although I am positioned for a pullback here, uh, you know, as I've said, all the money that is currently flowing in altcoins will eventually flow into BTC. However, we can see a scenario where BTC USD actually begins to move down while alt BTCs do continue to move up, which gives you that kind of really interesting uh, exit signal, I think, for the long term, which is, you know, uh, the money that is going to be, uh, the liquidity is still flowing into alt BTCs, but that is still euphoric. And the overall capital you can see is flowing back into BTC USD and moving into stable coins, right? And we've seen this kind of interesting phenomenon of stable coins having their own, um, uh, you know, Liquidity and uh, liquidity and stable coins continue to increase, kind of irregard, or excuse me, regardless of what Bitcoin is doing. I almost used the wrong word again, trying to phase that out of my dictionary vocabulary. Um, so if we see BTC USD move down while alt BTCs continue to move up, uh, that is generally a good kind of paradigm shifting signal, uh, and I mean in a significant way, as in breaking you know nine thousand, trading down below to about eighty six hundred, which is kind of the current short term target. Uh, and then 7,000 would kind of be the long-term target here if we do end up getting that. I think that's the moment where we can see a good opportunity for liquidity vis-a-vis -vis the stable coins to flow back into BTC. Uh, that's probably going to signal the end of the alt BTC runs, at least at that current point in time. Uh, and individuals like they generally do in alt season, we're going to see a big influx of bag holders from last alt season, exit the markets, and finally get into BTC where they should be. And unfortunately, a lot of individuals left holding the bags, you know, looking at weekly charts on all BTCs and not buying when they should. And again, uh, they're going to do what they do, which is probably move down for another 18 months. And BTC USD is going to do what BTC USD does, which is going to move up to about 14,000. So with that being said, um, the, the risk to reward setup right now, of course, is the same that I pointed out. The Tenkan Key June cross under is a good objective sell signal, uh, giving us a short term target, at least on this particular trade. 
uh, down to about 8986. So just a little bit under that $9,000 barrier. Should we break that $9,000 barrier? Certainly and close the daily below that. I would be inclined to take the uh, edge to edge Kumo trade, uh, which would be taking us down to about 7,000. But of course, a brief stop off would be about that $8,000 mark, which would be about halfway through and where the current cloud is right now, at least the future cloud. Uh, and of course, you know, the, the thinking on this is pretty good. I mean, you can just do some good objective back testing on this. Uh, individuals say that green Kumo clouds act as support. However, we tend to see price fall right through them almost always. Uh, and red Kumo clouds act as resistance. However, typically price tends to just burst right through them, particularly. And again, this is what I've said over and over again. The manner in which we approach support and resistance is very important. If you approach support or resistance or supply and demand, the order blocks, whatever, however you would like to conceptualize the horizontal levels in the market, with high momentum and high volume, you tend to bounce off like if you threw a Super Bowl down at the ground very, very hard or at the ceiling very hard in the case of resistance. Uh, but when you approach support and resistance with um, falling volume and falling volatility, falling momentum, uh, you tend to continue in that direction. Uh, you do not tend to bounce. Uh, now, that's it's not a hard given, but that is the statistical likelihood. Therefore, in this, in this scenario, uh, BTC is unfortunately uh, more prone to continue falling uh, as it is continuing to put in lower highs on the daily time frame. And on the weekly, not only has the Heikinashi trend flipped bearish, but also we are continuing to move down. So, uh, you know, a retouch of 7,000, I think that's a good inflection area uh, to begin moving up. It's also kind of a retest of the accumulation area where we really began this last leg to the upside. So, uh, but overall, not putting a whole lot of stock in this chart because there's not a whole lot happening. And when there is happening, the market will give us objective movements. Remember, guys, what is the most important data metric from any chart? Only one thing. There's only one thing that is the most important thing whenever you look at a chart. It is not support and resistance. It is not what your indicators say. It is none of that. It is price, current price. Current price is the only thing that tells you what the market is actually doing. Everything else is supposition or historicity. So you can assume a whole lot from a chart. You can make the best plans, the best laid plans of mice and men. But at the end of the day, it is current price and only current price that tells you what the market is actually doing. And when current price violates what you think price was price ought to have done, well, it is time for you to rechange your opinion and your thought. Until then, I'd stay with the highest risk to reward setup here, which is uh, the trade to the downside. So I remain short on BTC USD. Not a whole lot has changed uh, insofar as that goes. Uh, Ethereum USD again as well, uh, just consolidating sideways here in this rectangle formation. We haven't broken to the upside nor to the downside. No objective signals here coming out of the daily. Our vol filters are far too low, so no trending trades. You know, really, so, you know, for the most part, those following PTP systems aren't going to be doing a whole lot. We can see the last exit signal they got from FUSD over here on the 2nd of June. Uh, and overall, it's just been range bound behavior. Now, of course, you can adopt that range bound behavior, adopt that range bound strategy uh, and find those trades on the hourly, on the four hour. They are there, particularly with an indicator like Minx, particularly with an indicator uh, such as the ones that I've shown you guys, um, you know. Uh, those strategies are there and working. And, and overall, what we're kind of doing, you know, very similar to what we're doing with like ADA, Link, and VeChain uh, in their current uh, consolidation range. So when, when something has a whole lot of volume and a lot of liquidity and it's consolidating and you have obvious clear range trade setups, you take those trades. Uh, if it's in your discretionary rules-based wheelhouse, which it is mine. But um, not a whole lot here for FUSD. I am short. I did have a good short entry here on um, FUSD. Uh, actual entry on FUSD was, uh, excuse me, uh, 246.95 on Bybit. So that's a good entry. Already hit TP1 on that. No reason to close the trade out. We'll just let the market do what the market does. Uh, Bitcoin dominance, which we've been keeping our eye on. We do have another weekly close and we can begin looking at weekly closes right now. Uh, now on the weekly time frame, we are beginning to get a little bottomed out. We can see ISIS spot here in oversold territory, uh, basically right where we've bounced before. Uh, you know, you could call this whatever you like, kind of a triple bottom or a head and shoulders. I don't really like any of that stuff. Inverted head and shoulders, excuse me. I don't like any of that. I do still think that the movement up on uh, on uh, Bitcoin dominance here is uh, is more likely. Um, so just keeping that just keeping that basically where we're at, which would be um, which would be a little negative for alt BTC pairs and give us another opportunity for those reentries. However, we are still in a bearish weekly trend on Bitcoin dominance, and I don't see that breaking. And that is not going to break. Uh, as long as Bitcoin remains sideways. So Bitcoin can continue to remain sideways. Volatility can get lower, volume can get lower. So uh, everybody's trying to position themselves for the right, for the big move. And I, I, I think that's a fool's errand. That's fine if you have a strong directional bias, but um, right now the bots and algos are really running everything. So those doing short-term stuff on BTCUSD are kind of getting wrecked. Uh, looking at our roadmap here, again, not a whole lot has changed. Overall consolidation in this rectangular formation, measured movement on Bitcoin to the upside. 
is of course to 11,327 measured movement to the downside 7,287 so good confluence there with the measured movement of um, uh, uh, good measured movement with um, uh, excuse me the Ichimoku uh, the Ichimoku setup uh, kind of descending channel that we're currently trading in right now so again the risk reward trade setup for me anyways is kind of the movement down to 8600 uh, and actually a little bit below that if we kind of look for the retest down around 8200 81,000 or excuse me 8200 8100 uh, if we do stay true to this descending channel Uh, and then looking short term right here again a whole lot of chop a whole lot of consolidation bots and algos really running everything basically front running every level uh we did have a little bit of a bottom here as indicated by vix fix and then of course we did have a nice isis bot signal right here for the buy and just this nice little about two percent or excuse me about one percent swing trade right here uh from entry right around 91.31 and then we kind of reached a peak at around 92.44 before isis bot did signal the sell right here around 91.90 uh we've had a little bit of a fake out here uh, and then overall, not a whole lot of volume. Uh, we did have, as we can see, positive funding here. So that did explain the push to the downside. Uh, funding has switched negative again, but I don't really see anything uh, conducive uh, to entering into kind of a short-term trade setup. Uh, I would think that maybe a little bit more upside here is in the cards intraday, uh, but I don't have a strong opinion and I'm certainly not playing any position based off of this. So uh, just waiting for the right setup. This was a good setup and really nothing uh, results and again uh, one way to have played this as well is to take the trade 50 percent off at tp1 stop loss should be at break even and one can be currently riding this trade if one is expecting a little bit more upside uh, but just watch kind of this area where liquidity has been grabbed right around the 9200 dollars area all right so we went over bitcoin we went over ethereum and overall where we're at in the markets uh let's overall look at my current open trade highlights uh uso Uh, USO and one example right here. So looking certainly for this uh, uh, price, uh, and this is what we've talked about before. As we can see, USO consolidating here sideways above the daily baseline on falling volume. So we can call this an ascending triangle. It's certainly not perfect. Uh, we do have this fake out candle. If we were to remove that from our observations, then things would kind of uh, begin to flesh out a little bit better. Uh, and we are basically at the apex of that. You know, I don't really like to see price when we reach uh, the apex of triangular formations. Uh, they work good in bull markets. You can kind of see any reason to take longs in bull markets. And certainly we do have a bull market that we are in the midst of in traditional equities. But uh, uh, what's really more interesting is this uh, this this consolidation at resistance, resistance right around $29.20, $29, which we are currently trading above. Uh, current closing price on USO is about $29.17. Uh, and this falling volume, right? So remember, just approaching resistance on falling volume, falling volume in the middle of a formation is a good uh uh, is a good sign that price is likely to continue in that direction. We tend to burst right through resistance uh, and burst and, and fall right through support when we approach it on falling volume, falling volatility. And that's certainly what we're doing here in the case of USO, approaching resistance on falling uh, volume. Uh, so nice upside targets for this. If we were to just take a conservative, and I've already, of course, posted the target for the group members. But if we were to just take a nice conservative target here and look for a... Uh, a measured breakout then we can easily see USO up to about 3284 I think 33 is is overall the price target that I agree with on USO for this particular movement and just perfect R to R on this trade so uh, that's kind of the one I'm most excited about uh, and then also kind of the SPX 500 uh, index which I am long on as well uh, so been long in the SPX 500 for the group for a while we're going to be hitting our first take profit today that I finally posted for that excuse me that uh, that I posted for the group members um, A good CFD trade, and this really does kind of hedge against um, uh, the short exposure that I certainly have for BTC and Ethereum. So long on traditional equities and short on cryptocurrency, or at least the majors, at least Bitcoin and Ethereum, uh, and then range trading and scalping the uh, perp pairs, the ones with high volume and high liquidity, ADA, VeChain, Link, and um, uh, of course the... Uh, Kind of deep in the woods on the long alt trades and the altcoin portfolios that have been posted which are performing quite well uh those altcoin portfolios were posted several months ago and i do hope that the premium members took advantage of those to the best of their ability all right but 
uh, on the same on the same account, right? On the same account. What I will not be surprised for here uh, to see this is the ES futures. This is the uh, S and P 500 E mini futures. I will not be surprised to not see a breakout here, and I would not be surprised to see the area here on the S and P, for example, between 2980 uh, and 3200 form a range, uh, just like Bitcoin did. So. I would not be surprised to see that, although I am eager to take uh, or to enjoy uh, breakouts if we do continue to push up here. Um, I don't want uh, I don't want traders to kind of get over leveraged and over risky at this current point in time, because uh, that would cause the maximum amount of pain if the S&P 500 did not actually break out here. And based on what I've seen with uh, Bitcoin and Ethereum, that would be actually quite likely. All right, uh, let's take a second here and see if we can't take a request from the guru. Uh, Borg Channel asks, what VPN do I use? I actually use Winscribe. It's my favorite VPN. Uh, you can use it as well. Winscribe.crackingcryptocurrency.com will give you some free uh, bandwidth. Make sure to check that out. I did post a trade on LSK. Uh, but sure, let's go look at the LSK chart. All right, so uh, LSK, if we look at the long term here, uh, LSK is breaking out of a long term falling wedge. Uh, you guys know that I'm not a huge fan of falling wedges. I do not like them, uh, but the market does seem to like them. They're, they're kind of like the favorite. Uh, how do I put them? Like falling wedges are like, if everything else is bullish, but these coins haven't moved yet, and people want to set a scenario for them to, to, to push up an amazing amount of uh, an amazing amount of valuation. Falling wedges is what you're going to get. They do not have a high hit rate. Um, so I have put the falling wedge on here for a frame of reference, but I've measured my targets via my own purposes here. Um, so uh, on the weekly time frame, uh, price, uh, you know, it's here. So we had some nice weekly consolidation uh, overall moving down. We do have a nice volume spike right here. So kind of our initial buy in. Price has fallen back about 50% of that, and we are attempting to get our first push up. Not the big volume spike that we would want to see to really signify that, hey, this is really happening. We want to see some volume like we see right here. So here we see kind of the first big volume, second big volume, third big volume. And I want to point out that this is preceded on uh, this big sell side volume candle, right? So this, this, this candle actually ended up closing negative. So that's why this volume bar is red. However, I would argue that there was more buying than selling on this candle, which led to this run up. Uh, but this was the moment where basically all sellers were exhausted and uh, and anybody that had wanted to sell their LSK bags had sold and price moved up as a result. So nice blow off top on high volume and prices consolidated on low volume. What we really do need to see here is a nice uh, volume spike. So uh, until I see that, I'm not, uh, not going to enter. Now, LSK was quite higher and I did when I did post my LSK trade earlier this morning, I did have a lower entry on this because... Um, I do not really think that uh, the time is right. Uh, how, how do I, how can I, can I work this out in my noggin? Does it make sense? Um, uh, the, the odds, okay, so the, the risk to reward ratio of buying LSK here uh, and then seeing a market pullback, uh, if Bitcoin dominance does end up move up, I think is less uh, attractive than being patient and setting that much lower buy-in on LSK and kind of taking advantage of market pullbacks, right? So, you know, I am a conservative trader. I do not like to trade breakouts. Breakouts generally fail in my experience. Um, this is, you know, where the majority of individuals get trapped into trades. So everybody always wants to take a trade on the breakout. So kind of the the good opportunity, I remember looking at LSK last week uh, when, when LSK kind of first broke out of this falling wedge. And uh, it wasn't the opportunity to buy for me. Of course, there was opportunity there. Price did move up about eight to 10%, depending on where you would have bought on the break of that falling wedge. Uh, but that's not really the trade that we're looking for with an altcoin. Uh, if we're going to set a 10% or 15% stop loss, and we want this thing to run 40 to 50 to 60 or greater percentages, we want to get triple digits out of this, um, then we really want to get a good buy-in, feel confident with it, and let this thing run uh, and have it stop out if we are totally wrong in our thesis. So uh, I do think that uh, kind of the retest of the 1250 level was the area to, uh, to enter in. That is where I had set a limit bid. Uh, and now that we have kind of pushed off of that, uh, waiting for the next pullback to get more filled as well as provide the signal to the group. So 
I think that is the trade. Now, certainly an entry here is not too bad uh, because we do, again, you're, you're trading the breakout and you are trading kind of the retest. So you've had the break and the retest. So a BPC break pullback continuation, not a rounded retest because it did not take a long time to retest that level of support. So you could certainly look for a long here and then close the trade out. If price were to trade below 1250, I would consider that a failure uh, and then wait for that volume spike. The other thing that you could do as well uh, is just be patient and wait for that kind of that initial volume spike on the weekly, something that looks like this. And you could be fairly confident that you're going to have quite a few uh, double digits valuations coming out on LSK. But I would be conservative with an entry right here. As I said, on the daily, we're getting a little bit of regular bearish divergence. Uh, and we are also pretty near the overbought level on the ISIS bot coming down here on the four hour time frame as well. We're nearing that overbought territory. So uh, is this the pullback? I would like to see a little bit more. Let's actually see if we can take out 1321. Otherwise, this is probably going to hold as the level of breakout. So uh, a couple different ways to play this, you know, a small entry here, a more substantial entry at a lower price, something a little bit more conservative, like 1300 or 1290. Um, and then if that ends up, uh, uh, if this does end up beginning to run, let's say one or two days, and we end up forming our daily above our closest high, which would currently be right here at 1424, then you can kind of begin scaling a little bit more in, depending on where your target is for LSK. All right, so that is LSK, and let's see here. Uh, GBU Wally says, I request that I stay awesome for another couple of years. I will do my absolute best, my friend. Thank you. Crypto Rick, do you think we could be getting to a point where some alts now have a more valid use case than Bitcoin? No, that's the, no offense, my friend, but that's the silliest thing I've ever heard. Altcoins are for speculation. They do not have a legitimate use case. They're not going to be utilized in most cases, uh, and they are... Um, I mean, the majority of altcoin liquidity is propped up by wash trading back room deals and shady exchanges. It's just, it's just the reality. Um, you know, altcoins are, are, are altcoins, man. They always have been, they always will be. Uh, they are, they are there to, uh, they're, they're, you know, in a broad sense, they're there to take liquidity away from BTC. But uh, that's my opinion. I do think that is the case, uh, and I've seen it play out over multiple, multiple alt seasons over and over and over again. Um, but uh, I do not see the use case for the majority of, um, of altcoins. Storm, what do I think of the leverage tokens on FTX, for example, like Ethbull? You know, I think it's it's certainly an interesting way to trade. Um, I don't utilize them. I don't take advantage of them because I'm less comfortable with them. Uh, there's a problem with leverage products in that they tend to decay. They have a decay element. Um, so leverage products tend to always trend towards zero. So you can certainly utilize them for short-term speculation. Um, but I find, I find anyways, and I know that there are some arguments against this, but I find anyways that I feel more comfortable and I can certainly manage my trades better when I just use um, the perp contracts, for example. So, you know, I think that they, they present a very interesting use case. Um, I think that they are um, neat is kind of the word I'm looking for, just neat. But, um, uh, but uh, they're, they're, they're tricky. I think a regular perp contract is easier to trade, easier to understand. Um, so if, if you're gonna if you're gonna develop a strategy or trade them, I would certainly recommend uh, studying them and um, doing your research and starting out small and then kind of building from that. Because you know, Treese makes a very good point here. I've seen a lot of individuals um, post bad experiences trading the FTX leverage tokens. Not that they're designed to be that way. It's just that individuals uh, uh, individuals aren't really aren't really. Justin's view on altcoins. You take that back. Uh, listen, not all of them. There are some altcoins that I quite like, but you know, this is why, for example, there's a difference between swing trading on a weekly time frame, like long-term macro trading, uh, and investing. And there's very few altcoins that I actually invest in because I only invest in things that I never plan on selling. Uh, and you'd be really hard pressed to show me an altcoin that I don't plan on selling someday. All right. Um, Okay, that pretty much takes care of that. Let me take a quick glance at something here real quick. The few.
few, the proud, brave individuals who have notifications turned on. Um, all right, we don't got a lot of new viewers, but just in case, uh, because we do have to, of course, today's show is brought to you guys by the Premium Trading Group. That's uh, that's what's responsible for these setups. That's what's responsible for me being able to be here every single day, sharing free content, showing you guys what I do. Uh, and there's really never been a better time to learn how to navigate these markets, whether you're interested in cryptocurrency or Forex or stocks or derivatives, uh, we certainly have you covered in the Premium Trading Group because our community of professional traders will help you build your own objective, data-driven strategy if you're tired of trading with your gut or seeing poor discipline and trade management sap away your progress make the change and join us at premium.crackingcryptocurrency.com. Link's also in the description down below, premium.crackingcryptocurrency.com. Now we're gonna move on to Forex. I don't have, I only have one Forex set up right now. I'm currently trading. So let's go to, uh, and that's the Euro Yen. Um, so to take the long euro yen looking attractive here continuing to uh, push well i held this throughout the weekend so uh, did we actually hit tp1 no did not hit tp1 yet so just a little bit of patience here on the euro yen all right so Let's see your highlights. Uh, Aussie Kiwi kind of highlights for the Aussie Kiwi. This is a trade that we took um, last week in the premium trading group. So we shorted the Aussie Kiwi on, had to have been this day. So we were able to catch this last little bit of the trend, uh, hit TP1 on this candle right here, and then price actually ended up reversing uh, and giving us the exit signal right here on this candle. Uh, and then the dollar UN, we already talked about this, took the short trade. Uh, would have been, actually it was here. Yeah, so we enjoyed quite a bit of the dollar when ended up closing out on this candle right here last week. So we have had a little bit more downside here, but it honestly hasn't moved that far. So I'm gonna take those off the back watch list now uh, and just start watching. Um, I don't really see anything here, but chop from the Aussie and CAD pairs. Swissy and might have something. Uh, Euro Canadian got faked, but potentially a good opportunity for the RBB. Uh, Euro Swiss is on my watch list. We've had a nice little pullback here, so Euro Swiss might be prepped here for a long. Euro Pound actually ended up getting rejected, so glad we didn't take that for the long. Euro Dollars looking all right. Pound Kiwis pushing up a little bit off the bottoms here. The pound pairs are actually looking pretty good. The pound showing quite a bit of strength today. So I would be looking for daily swing trades from the pound pairs. Um, not out of the Kiwi pairs, would actually be looking to short those. And looking for short opportunities on the dollar pairs as well. Yeah, so the only thing that I really saw there was... Maybe the pound yen, but we're going to need a pullback on the pound yen. Pound dollar as well. Pullback on the pound dollar is in order. I didn't really see any short opportunities on the kiwi pairs. Yeah. Aussie Kiwi, I will be watching for a long, but we're not there yet. Mm, the Euro Aussie is one to watch as well. Yeah, Euro Swissy is one that I might enter today on this pullback. Uh, obviously, what can I say about precious metals? Comex reaching a boiling point right now with short sells at an, at just just an absolute max. The individuals, you know, the the amount of individual short on gold and silver, it's not going to end well for uh, for physical deliverers here, and it's gonna it's gonna end well for people who actually have physical bullion outside of exchanges and who do not who, who do not have uh, paper bullion. 
who do not have paper, silver, paper, gold. CFDs. All right. Yeah. Gold continuing its uptrend quite nicely here. Um, although I would be cautious about an entry at 1816. Again, certainly uh, holding positions that have been open for a while. This has been a beautiful trend to catch right here. And a beautiful weekly trend on gold. So kind of the next target would be that last uh, previous high around 1924. So we'll see if we can hit 1900 before the end of the week. Uh, palladium continuing to do well. And silver up at about 1978. Pretty soon we're going to have silver spot silver above $20, which is something we have not seen in quite a while. Uh, we've essentially rejected from this area three times uh, since back in September of 2019. But now we are powering through. And again, uh, you know, note uh, note that that continuing to push forward on low volume and low momentum, uh, it's it's that is a really beautiful pre breakout sign that I like to see. So I fully expect to see gold above $20 here before the end of the week. Uh, and really nothing to do with, with platinum here. Platinum is, uh, obviously the markets have moved in favor of palladium, but still uh, opportunity loss if you're ignoring gold and silver and not holding those trades. And then of course we talked about the SPX 500 CFD trade, which is a pretty good long to hold as hedge against everything. And then the last thing that I want to look at is our indices. Um, so yeah, so not flipping short on the Dow just yet. Uh, we, we are at support turning around just a little bit. So really nothing to say, uh, this is the DIA ETF. Uh, so I wouldn't be taking a long on this just now, but, um, I wouldn't be exiting positions that I held, uh, on Dow longs. And again, like I said, I have, uh, exposure, uh, exposure to the long side on the spy. Uh, the NASDAQ uh, after a little bit of a pullback here is opening up strong and performing well today, at least the triple Q ETF. Uh, 264.79. I think we're going to close uh, above uh, 263 today. So while not an entry signal in and of itself, um, for me anyways, uh, might be for some of you guys. Uh, and the SPY, uh, holding well, did not actually get the exit from the SPY. Uh, entry opportunity in this area. So I think SPY longs are actually valid as of right now. I think there's nothing wrong with being long the SPY on today's daily close. Again, might get uh, pushed back here and faked out for some, for some consolidation, but it's still the right trade to take. All right. That's about all we got today, guys, um, for the market watch. Let's get into, um, we're going to get into today's, uh, we're going to get into today's news. So let's go to our cryptocurrency segment. And then, and I want to talk, about, we're going to be talking about the Wirex CEO, kind of, uh, well, you'll see. Uh, and then we're also going to be talking about, you know, was it a good move? Uh, is it good for the markets that uh, Coinbase and some other major exchanges you know, stepped in and helped prevent the extent of the Twitter scandal that happened last week being as, you know, uh, pugnacious as it possibly could have been? So let's uh, let's get into today's uh, cryptocurrency segment. Let's go. All right. Okay. So first story today, we're going to be focusing on the, uh, going to be focusing on uh, kind of the Twitter scandal last week. So for those of you who weren't around last week, just to give you a brief update on what occurred uh, last week, you know, massive major, uh, you know, major accounts on Twitter were hacked across the board. Uh, we've kind of gone into the speculation on how this occurred, but, um, uh, essentially, you know, major, major accounts, you know, from, uh, from Elon Musk to, uh, Bill Gates to, um, Bill Clinton, uh, I think Bill Clinton, certainly Joe Biden, uh, were, were taking it, were, were taking, you know, um, hot, you know, we're taking hostile, we're taking over hostilely and, uh, the, you know, your, your typical, you know, 
uh, Bitcoin scam, you know, send uh, send one Bitcoin here, I'll send you two back, or send point one here, I'll send you point two back, uh, was uh, was was broadcast across the Twitter sphere, and the hackers were able to garner about a hundred thousand dollars. And again, you know, we've commented on, hey, this wasn't really the smartest uh, way that they could have taken advantage of this. These guys certainly could have crashed the market. Uh, you know, why didn't they use Monero? Uh, why did they use BTC? And of course, kind of the articles have been out all week, but we were certainly uh, very early to cover this last week, and. Uh, uh, we, again, we have some kind of interesting follow through, uh, certainly some interesting follow through on the knowledge that Coinbase and some other major exchanges may have helped prevent the uh, the the quantity of funds um, that were sent to the malicious address from being as bad as they possibly could. So if you guys have questions throughout the course of this, uh, make sure to drop the questions in the comment section and our moderators will attempt to answer them the best that we can. And I'll follow up with you guys uh, when I'm done here reading. So. Again, our first story here is going to be following up on last week's epic Twitter hack, which, you know, despite the scope of the breach, netted the attackers, you know, uh, you know, a pretty, pretty, pretty palsy 12 BTC. And today we learned that Coinbase did help prevent a much greater disaster and protected over 100, 1,000 of their customers because they prevented them from sending Bitcoin to the Twitter attacker, right? Uh, and of course, the Twitter attacker hijacked hundreds of high profile accounts last week. Oh, we'll just get into the the highlights here do not want to add that app to my extensions thank you very much uh so high profile accounts last week in an attempt to push a send one receive two type scam now coinbase ceo or excuse me coinbase cio philip martin spoke with forbes uh and in that interview he confirmed that if coinbase hadn't scrambled to blacklist the attacker's wallet address another 30.4 bitcoin may have been scammed worth about two hundred seventy eight thousand dollars today now that easily was over twice what the hackers did end up managing to get away with now despite coinbase's swift action on blacklisting that address 14 of their customers are confirmed to have fallen to the scam and together contributed only three thousand dollars to the actual attack users on other exchanges such as gemini kraken and binance also apparently tried sending bitcoin from their exchange account to the the address but apparently even less was stolen off of those platforms and those exchanges too moved to block the addresses as soon as the scam came to light. Now, analytics firms are, of course, hot on the trail of the scammer watching what the Bitcoin is doing closely, thanks to Bitcoin's nature as a public blockchain. And according to firms like Elliptic, some of the stolen Bitcoin has moved to exchanges and Bitcoin mixers like Wasabi Wallet. For example, Elliptic CSO Tom Robinson stated that they have tracked some of the Bitcoin to known mainstream exchanges, but they did decline to disclose the names of those exchanges for confidentiality reasons. <coughs> KuCoin. Now, Robinson further said the 2.89 Bitcoin or 22% of the total haul was also sent to Wasabi Wallet for mixing purposes. According to Whitestream, another blockchain analytics firm, one of the attacker's known addresses has seemed to have interacted with several digital currency payment processors like coin payments, uh, Coinbase and BitPay in the past, suggesting that the hacker did not do his due diligence and potentially dox themselves via previous online purchases made with this wallet. So again, perhaps not the most intelligent attack ever made. BitPay confirmed there was a purchase made at one of its merchants back in May of 2020 for about $25 coming from one of the attacker's known addresses. And they went on to say that part of their standard compliance procedures uh, or as part of their standard compliance, they will be making all details of this transaction available to the appropriate parties, quote, law enforcement. Uh, and this includes law enforcement, so it's possible that the FBI may already have a lead on the attacker in this case. Coin Payments declined to comment on the matter, while Coinbase did not return any requests for comment. But if the attacker did in fact use these services in the past for completing online purchases, there's a good chance that their logs uh, could bring them to justice. Another analytics firm, the Blockchain Intelligence Group, BIG, said a small amount, about $10, was sent to Binance. It's speculated that the attacker may have actually been testing the waters to see if a larger amount could be moved in order to launder the proceeds or potentially just as a way to confuse blockchain researchers because kind of the first uh, kind of first rule is we're not going to be able to, to, to sell on exchanges. Now, according to the block research, Kraken and Binance acquired Indian uh, crypto exchange Wazir X. They also received a little bit of the stolen Bitcoin. So if the Twitter attacker is watching this show and listening right now, you know, it's pretty fair warning. You know, authorities are pretty hot on your trail, you know, and the FBI is most likely going to kind of going to be coming uh, knocking on your door relatively soon because 
It's just not the most intelligent way to uh, to pull off a Twitter heist and certainly not the most intelligent cryptocurrency to use with it and certainly not the best way to do it given that you know you made purchases with these wallets prior to using them for receiving stolen Bitcoin. So um, another one bites the dust perhaps. All right. So, you know, not uh, not 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 all ends well uh, in the case of stolen Bitcoin. Now, our next story might give the Twitter hacker an idea just what to do next, though, uh, and where to take his Bitcoin if his mom's basement is about to get raided. Right. Remember, you know, that Cheeto door latch does not hold very well. So you might remember the Wirecard disaster from late last month, where one of the biggest accounting scandals in recent history took place at the German payment card business Wirecard. Uh, we covered it in uh we covered it in this good, we covered it in this breaking Bitcoin Bits episode right here. It will be linked down below for you guys to check out. Now, the latest update on the whereabouts of Wirecard's former chief operating officer, COO, of the now defunct German fintech company suggests that he is hiding out in Russia, where he is said to be transferring large sums of Bitcoin, so laundering his proceeds into Bitcoin. A top German business newspaper, Handelsblatt, uh, they reported on the latest developments in the manhunt for uh, Jan Marsal Ek, I believe how you pronounce his name, who is currently wanted by three national agencies for embezzlement. And he is said to have transferred significant amounts of Bitcoin since escaping from Germany, hiding out again currently as he is in Russia. Investigators allege that he set up fraudulent wirecard operations in Dubai in order to orchestrate a sophisticated accounting fraud, and as head of operations for their East Asia division, he siphoned off funds that apparently were converted into Bitcoin before fleeing to Russia. So further investigative reports by German media now apparently document his extensive connections to Russia and kind of his shady contracts and business relations with suspicious individuals of interest in the Middle East and Libya. Now, this man was said to have been fascinated with cryptocurrency technology for many years, particularly its ability to move money anonymously. And in a twist of events, it seems that kind of the fox was put in charge of the fox was put in charge of the hen house here. The former COO fled the country shortly after the scandal erupted in June, which forced Wirecard to file for insolvency uh, when auditors reported that two billion euro was missing from the payment processor's balance sheet the biggest scandal to ever rock a blue chip company on Germany's DAX index ever. According to auditors from the respected Ernest and Young, the money was supposedly being held in East Asian escrow accounts, but later investigation revealed that that money was in fact missing from the third party trustees as well, because guess what? It was converted into Bitcoin. On June 18th, Wirecard fired the entire management team and German authorities issued arrest warrants for Wirecard executives CEO uh, Marcus Braun and the COO uh, Jan Marsalek. Jan Marsalek, excuse me. Uh, now, Braun turned himself in promptly, but Marsalek, who headed up Wirecard's Asian operations, claimed he was going to be flying to the Philippines in, in order to follow the missing money and <laughs> clear his name. Instead, he took the opportunity to disappear uh, and begin to uh, siphon in his uh, ill begotten Bitcoin. The rest, of course, is history. The company's shares fell some 90% before they filed insolvency. And the company now claims the funds may have never even existed in the first place. Instead, it was all a cover for a sophisticated scheme to steal billions of dollars in company funds by Mr. Yan. Famous investigative reporter specializing in Russian operations, Christo Groves, published details in this uh, Bellingcat piece right here in which he documents uh, Marcelek's repeated trips to Russia since 2004 under multiple false passports using both commercial flights and private jets. Now, Russia, which has an unclear regulatory landscape for cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin, could be said to even be hostile to large Bitcoin transactions taking place inside its borders. But um, unclear. Russia's tough stance on Bitcoin and cybercrime in general, while it does seem to conflict with his long documented history of hopping in and out of the country during his time as Wirecard COO, uh, it's now starting to raise suspicion as to whether Russian intelligence is actually aware of his presence in the country and are potentially even involved in the scheme. Because, you know, certainly uh, we've covered the, um, uh, uh, we've covered this with previous 
uh, cryptocurrency exchanges as well. So in this regard, if the Twitter hacker is still watching, if you guys, if you haven't turned off yet, uh, you may want to make arrangements with your, uh, you know, F F <laughs> with your FSB KGB handlers before booking your escape flight to Moscow. But maybe try and get in touch with uh, with Jan first for some pointers on buying your future winter vacation house in Soki with your stolen Bitcoin. Now, you know, obviously our first uh, our first story followed up on you know last week's epic Twitter hack, which despite the scope of the breach, netted attackers 12 BTC, and you know kind of this final story just following up on our wire card uh, on our wire card reporting. So I guess kind of my takeaways from all this are this: um, it's very very difficult to get away with. Um, uh, with, with stealing BTC, even when you're able to take advantage of an entire social media platform. And it is very, very difficult to get away with the, the biggest kind of European scandal of all time, kind of the biggest scandal on, on Germany's DAX index of all time, uh, and think that you're going to be able to get away with the ill-gotten proceeds via cryptocurrency in Russia. So, I don't know. Time will tell on how this all plays out, but, um, uh, you know, you don't mess with cryptocurrency, man. Uh, you're messing with some real, 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 real invested interests here. So, let me know your guys' thoughts in the comment section down below. Uh, with that being said, we're going to hop back into the live scene and take some questions before we disperse for today's uh, festivities. All right, here we are back in the live scene. It is 1257. We've been going for about an hour, so good show so far. Although, again, Twitter did decide to, uh, to ban us today. Oh, shoot. All right, let's take a look at E Live. All right, so giving some rewards away over here on DLive. And shout out to my brothers and sisters over here on Twitch, as well as YouTube. Crypto Jack says, not sure if even a fortune in Bitcoin is worth having to live the rest of your life out in Exodus in Russia. Yeah, you know, the reality is, you know, individuals, you know, it, it, it's kind of a it's kind of a trope to say that, you know, one, you know, that, that, that money buys happiness and certainly money does improve your lifestyle. But, uh, you know, there are certain boundaries, certain borders that it's unwise to cross. Right. It just, you know, like, again, you know, individuals watch. Uh, it depends on how you play it, man. It depends on how you play it. You know, some individuals are able to kind of. Uh, take advantage of these big heists you know jordan belfort is a good example and you know still managed to kind of come out on top but the majority of individuals aren't uh, and they end up getting greedy and just ruining their lives for for nothing you know for nothing you know it is better to live a lifestyle where you actually build and contribute and help individuals out because that is a way that you can you know you have control you know, anytime you kind of step into the throttle and you think that you're going to get away with something, you know, for a big heist or a big, for a big ill-gotten game, you know, it almost always destroys not only your life, but the individuals around you. And if you're going to be any kind of individual where people rely on you or people trust you or people depend on you, um, you need to have your shit together. Uh, you really need to, you really need to, um, you really need to be in a position where you were deserving of that trust and respect. Ooh. 
am I going to be homeschooling the kiddos? California shut down the majority of school districts for the fall. Well, I'm certainly not in California. Uh, but yes. I, uh, you know, I, I consider it, I'm pretty disappointed with what my children learn in school. And I would argue that they do the majority of their learning here in the household. Personal responsibility, again, facts are less important in the age of, you know, instant access to knowledge, but teaching children how to think and how to be responsible and how to take responsibility for their own actions, that's what's important. Teach, teach kids how to think, not what to think. That's my, that's my philosophy. Okay. Um, so we've got a request for strat and a request for power. Let's take a gander. Opportunity to look at strat. Strat BTC being shilled pretty hard, as was QLC. I noticed on my feeds earlier um, on the weekly time frame, looking good. We are getting this building rising volume. Uh, we're really nowhere near our first significant level of turnaround. So let's just start off here on the weekly time frame. That level certainly a little bit more significant here. And do we have turnaround here? Yes. Here. Here. And kind of the current market bottom for Stratus. So current kind of current market bottom for Stratus around 3370, which puts us right in the middle here. Uh, we did face a little bit of resistance right here around 57.45. We certainly broken above that. And so from our previous resistance, we're already up about 100%. Um, until kind of the next significant area of resistance, which is, you know, not even until about 11,488 sats, around 11,000 sats, uh, we've still got quite a bit of ways to go. Uh, about another 40%. So I certainly don't see any reason why one should not hold strat here on the weekly time frame. Um, kind of ultimate short-term target of around 17,590 if we're able to make it up that far. On the daily here, all right, so from our accumulation, kind of our first leg up, second leg up, kind of a nice rounded little, little scallop here. Um, I don't like entry right here. I don't like entry right here. If I were going to play this, most likely like a cup and handle. We can kind of see how this played out exactly like the last time where price just scalloped back up to the previous resistance and then ended up pulling back about 23%. So if we were to see that from here, about 23%, right back down to this area again, making a double bottom. So right around 59.41 would be an area I feel a little bit more comfortable entering into strat rather than taking this breakout trade on high volume. Uh, this looks like a profit taking candle to me rather than an entry candle to me. also be kind of our third little bit of bearish divergence. Yeah. So if we were to get about a 20, anywhere from like a 10 to 20% pullback on this, if you wanted to be aggressive, you could be targeting about the 12,000 sat area. And, you know, what do we got? Stratus. So what are we doing? Yeah, probably about a 10% stop loss on Strat. Gonna be about right. University of Dad. Um, Mr. Ether says I currently have a 10x gain on Band. I sold 50%, but it's supposed to be a long-term hold, so I'm conflicted. What would I do in such a situation? Uh, well, first off, thank you so much for the $20 super chat, uh, Robert. I highly appreciate that. Um, well, as as always, man, just go back to your original plan, right? Um. You know, band is something that is that has performed extremely, extremely well. Um, doesn't really matter what the chart looks like. Blow off, you know, absolute blow off top. 
Um, you don't know how high something will go when we're when we're when we're reclaiming new ATA or when we're forming new all-time highs. So what I would do is, uh, you know, if band was designed to be a long-term hold and you are comfortable with your initial purchase price, you know, the question is like, if price were to come back down to your entry, would you feel comfortable buying more? And if the answer is yes, then that's a position that you hold on to, right? Um, you know, depending on what your markers are, depending on what your initial, you know, desire for this coin was, um, you know, if you're, you know, if you if you you've already sold fifty percent, so you can move your stop loss to kind of TP one if you want, if you were happy with those gains, or you can begin to distribute here a little bit. You can sell, you know, five percent, ten percent of your position every week. Um, you know, wait until a range forms. Wait until you see a rejection candle on the daily. Wait until you see a significant exit indication on the weekly or the daily. Um, but I would not go against your original investment thesis. For example, if your original if your original intent with band was to you know, hold it as a long-term hold and hold it as a long-term hold. Hold it as a long-term hold, you know? If you really think that, that band, you know, is in early days of price discovery and has the opportunity and the potential to hit $10, $20, $30 in the future over the next 10, 15, 20 years, then hold it as a long-term hold. And don't, um, do not, um, you know, don't betray your former self, right? And that's always kind of the, the, the first rules, like don't betray your former self. And this is why it's so important to have a plan when you go into a trade. Um, because for example, if I buy, if I buy like Cardano and I tell myself, okay, uh, I'm gonna sell 50% when it, when it goes 3X and then I'm gonna hold the rest for five years until I get a 10X gain or greater. Well then unfortunately I'm stuck doing that. I have to do that which might leave me with a position that I'm unhappy with in two years or three years. But you, you follow the rules, you follow the plan, right? And if you do that over and over and over again, you will have objective winners, you will have objective losers, and you will have an objective system. And you won't, you won't feel anxious. You won't feel worried. You won't feel pressed to do this or that or, or make the right decision or, or make a mistake or, or be hard on yourself when you make a mistake. You know, you're going to have a, an, hopefully an asymmetric distribution of wins and losses. And the best way to put that distribution in your favor is to follow the rules. Right? So be, um, don't, uh, don't disrespect the former Robert that made the, they, that made the decision to, uh, to hold this as a long-term hold. here uh power yeah going on with mr power ledger uh all right so power's been in a pretty long downtrend um this is uh this is my australian moon coin um well, let's just mark off mark at bottom relatively here. Yeah, I think that's fine right here. But, all right, so yeah, first major resistance on power that I'm seeing going to be around the 1900 sat area um and we are currently about 70 percent away from that uh, again here's our accumulation first initial volume spike prices proceeded on falling volume uh, prices pushing up on falling volume this this is good uh, this actually looks quite good to me um, particularly on the weekly time frame here um you know any opportunities to buy this around you know anywhere from 800 to 900 is good. Anything under a thousand is good on this. Uh, we can, of course, have throwback. This doesn't have to break up and continue moving in a straight line right now. It really happen. Uh, let's see here. One, two, three, four, four tests of resistance, lower high, and then a push back up. Uh, the other trade setup for this that I see that I would be willing to play is kind of any pullbacks now. I'm trying to play the BPC. 
And he pullbacks now to about 10,000, or excuse me, to about 1,000, 1,040, 1,050. Uh, would be a decent long opportunity as well to trade the BPC for the breakout. The one rare time that I actually enjoy or would look for a breakout trade. So let's get some board here. About an 8% stop loss. So just for a 2 to 1, you if you were just going for a 2 to 1, you could just target you know, 1,200 sats. But uh, I don't really see any reason not to... Uh, be aggressive and at least have 1900 there as kind of a, a long term target for this. But you know, is that really justified based on kind of the momentum or based on what we've actually done? Uh, maybe not. So let's actually let's actually look at the range that we've formed. So I'm going to be conservative with this range actually. The range that we've actually traded in. Turn off magnet mode. Yeah. So yeah, that's that's eleven seventy six. So about twelve hundred sats would be giving us that uh, at about two to one R to R. If you can get the entry right around um, one thousand and forty sats, would be good. Otherwise, you know, I don't think this is the bad time. Uh, but I would reevaluate if price were to begin trading back into the range below 10,040 uh, and certainly if we were to trade below 900 sats again. One that I will revisit. What was today's Money Monday buy? Today's Money Monday buy is brought to you by the Kraken Cryptocurrency Premium Trading Group. And today's Money Monday buy was da -da 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 Zen. Horizon, yay for privacy coins. So last week's was Zcash, and this week's was Horizon. Uh, we will have some follow through just like with Zcash. Uh, we'll see. We're basically right back to where we bought uh, Zcash. Um, last, uh, right back to where we bought Zcash last uh, last Monday. So those of you who missed out on uh, on Money Monday last week, uh, it's there for you. So we'll see if we can get a resultant there with Zen, but uh, Zen is uh, is ready, in my opinion. Uh, Robert does a wealthy Wednesday instead of a money Monday. All right, I am uh, I'm getting yelled at to check out HBAR. And this will probably be the last chart that I look at. I'm going to look at the USDT. Uh, let's see here, Dara Hashgraph. Uh, and Kava Labs, two of kind of my favorite little coins right now, I'm not gonna lie. Um, nice symmetrical consolidation in this range on falling volume. Don't really see the breakout right now. If I were to look for the breakout, I'd like to see it above four cents, excuse me, 0 0.044, where I'd like to see that breakout on the weekly time frame. Like right there is where I'd like to see that breakout. But decent ascension. Up to that breakout point we're about 70 percent away so kind of a, a lot of white space not really if we come out of the daily we'll see yeah we'll see this pretty well filled in on the daily yeah yeah this is not a bad place this is not a bad place for h bar that 10% stop loss and then looking for that to run. And that'd be taking us up to about six and a half cents. Kind of initial more conservative target of about 0 0.057 and then six and a half I like for a runner uh, and beyond. And OMG, let me see, go, I'm doing a pullback. Let's see, took the range trade. Let's see if we've actually got the fall off here. Nah, I think that I'm wrong. Uh, I, th I think that uh, I think that the range is actually 
gonna break here because I don't see that big wash of volume here on link. Uh, price is likely to just unfortunately continue pushing down. So I took some um, took some link uh, took some link longs. Likely to be wrong on those, but it was the right trade for R to R. Same thing here with this kind of second leg down on V chain. Uh, we'll see what happens over the next few hours. But, uh, all right. With that being said, guys, uh, I want to get the online trading academy live, and I want to get the I want to get everything um, online and loaded for you guys. So I want to push the online trading academy live for the premium members, and I want to get these coupon codes out to our previous premium members. Again, if you are a previous premium member and you do not receive a discount code to join to rejoin the uh, premium trading group make sure to let us know and we will do uh you know hit us up at support at crackingcryptocurrency.com and we'll do everything in our power uh to make that right all right with that being said uh let's go to this scene we can do the thing all right guys <sighs> Let's see here. All right. So as I said, uh, upcoming events, um, online trading Academy going to be pushed live today and the members come home, uh, emails with the discount codes should be going out today as well. Um, that's about it. That's all we got. Uh, if you guys have any questions, comments, concerns, sarcastic remarks, or death threats, make sure to leave them in the comment section down below, because we are going to begin selecting one random commenter per month and giving them a month of free access to the, uh, premium trading group. Other than that, make sure you guys join us in the Discord at discord.crackingcryptocurrency.com to stay up to date. Links in the description down below. And if you guys would like to join the premium trading group and begin building your own objective trading strategy, links in the description for that as well, or point your browser to premium.crackingcryptocurrency.com. Other than that, um, we will be back tomorrow at 12 p.m. Central Standard Time to break down the markets, give you guys our thoughts, opinions. We'll cry, we'll laugh, we'll cheer, we'll look at uh, the profits from our shitcoin trades. Uh, we'll give you guys an update on Money Monday. Other than that, uh, remember guys, at the end of the day, technical analysis is fantastic, nailing entries is fantastic, but risk management and position sizing consistently pay the bills in my household, so they should be the same for you. And do not let trading interfere with the other things in your life that, um, that really matter, right? So... Uh, if you are consumed by the 15 minute chart and you have not told your family that you love them for the last seven days, definitely time to take a break. The markets will still be here. We'll still be pumping when you get back. Just hold on to that. Uh, just hold on to that. Uh, just hold on to that Kava Labs long. Uh, other than that, trade safely, guys. Uh, we'll be back tomorrow and um, you guys have a great day. Cheers.